If you're a beginner or if you're a pro, this video is going to give you a really nice framework uh, on how to learn Clow 3D or 3D fashion in general in 2025 and 2026. Okay. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Vivek. I am the founder of Learn 3D Fashion Platform. I have taught more than 3,000 students from 10 plus countries and brands uh, like Nar Harvard, Nike, FIT, and UAL, and more. So uh, I have been updating my courses and I've been talking to a lot more designers. So I thought to create this quick guide, okay, so that it can help you to set a framework, okay, that how do you need to uh, understand uh, 3D fashion. So, uh, Let's have a quick look into the two most important trends I think that is going. Uh, so as you can see, right, this blue and this green thing. So green thing is the fashion and AI and this blue is Clo 3D, right? So Clo 3, the 3D, 3D and AI, the, these are just moving at a, a very exponential rate. And uh, the way the industry is adopting 3D and AI is, uh, is, is rapid. And I think every designer right now need to adopt 3D with AI into their workflow, okay? Uh, and this, the, these two, I think, are uh, like for 2025, this is the most important thing that you need to include. Uh, before we move on to the framework of how to learn Clow 3D and 3D fashion, right? Uh, let's just quickly see how 3D and AI fashion are different from each other, okay? Let's first talk about AI fashion. So. The AI uh, in the fashion uh, space, right, the way it is coming is mostly in the design process, okay? So for example, a quick example is uh, we used to create mood boards in colleges and for uh, the brands also, right? So right now what you can do, what we used to do was we used to go to Google, Pinterest and all these places, right? Uh, try to create a kind of a mood board, right? Now what you can do is you can use AI to generate some really interesting images, right? Uh, to bring your imagination into life or what you're exactly thinking, which was not possible before, right? And you can put it in front of you, right? And just see like how it goes, right? So the design aspect of it, right? Uh, is like the, the the inspiration part, the new idea part is from the AI, right? But once your design, the ideas are ready, right? And you want to move into the producibility side, that's where 3D comes in. You cannot take uh, the, the, the ideas from AI generated images uh, to the production, right? So you have to see what are the problems, how those patterns are going to get produced, how those patterns are going to be made and all these things. So that's where the 3D comes in. Right now, 3D is way much more important in our industry, uh, right? Uh, because fashion is all about like two and four between the design processes, right? Between manufacturers, be between brands, between brand houses and all these things, right? So 3D is more towards the design side for the inspiration side and uh, sorry, the AI is more towards the inspiration and idea side and 3D is more towards the producibility side, okay? So that's the difference, okay? Uh, just want to quickly explain you so that like you don't get confused, okay? So if somebody tells you like AI is replacing 3D, it's not. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> All right. So um, now uh, let's try to have a framework, okay? Uh, on learning Clow 3D or 3D fashion in general, okay? Uh, so there are basically five uh, structure, five stages of learning uh, Clow 3D or 3D fashion, okay? Now. Uh, before I go into these uh, stages individually, you need to understand that you don't need to purchase any software, okay? Uh, I Right now, the way I have uh, covered my course also is that you always have an alternative, okay? So, for example, if Clo is not an option for you, you, can, you cannot buy Clo, uh, then you can use Style 3D. It's completely free. Uh, they, these two software they look exactly the same. I don't know who is copying whom, but they look exactly the same. So if you know Clo 3D, you can shift to uh, Style 3D. If you know Style 3D, you can easily shift to Clo 3D. So in the same way, Blender is free, Daz is free, Make Human is free. Uh, for example, for if you want to use AI tools and Hugging Face is free. So you don't need to buy anything, okay? If like if if uh, if that's the issue for you, you can still go through all the stages and all everything, okay? Now. Uh, so there are five stages in 3D fashion, okay? So first stage is called modeling, second is finishing, texturing, rendering, and animation. These are the five stages and you need to go through all the stages, okay? So let's go through all the stages one by one. So the first stage is called modeling. So in modeling, what happens is like you have a basic shape and you convert that basic shape into a desired shape, okay? Now, the two concepts that becomes really important for modeling is garment construction. How do you construct a garment, right? Uh, different kinds of garment are constructed in different ways. You need to understand that. The second part is pattern making, okay? Look, uh, 
I think the most important part in 3D modeling is pattern making, okay? Because if you want to change the shape uh, of your design, right, you need to understand the pattern making concept. So this is the one of the most important structure, okay? Uh, now, uh, once you understand these two concepts, right, the next thing that becomes really important is the finishing process, okay? I'll show you a demo also quick, okay? But let's try to understand what is a finishing process. Finishing process is understanding the seams, okay? And the construction of uh, the garment at the same time trims and accessories, okay? Uh, finishing is a visual process. It is also a technical process. So I'll, I'll, I'll quickly explain you, okay? Let's let's move on to like, I think let's go to clue, okay? So this is, a, let, let's try to finish a collar of, of a shirt, okay? Now, look, this, this is not realistic, okay? This doesn't look realistic at all. We know how a collar is made, okay? Uh, so you have two pieces of collar, right? In one, you put a fusing. In another, uh, you will like, you, you will have two pieces of collar, right? You will stitch, uh, like, you will stitch it in the wrong side. Then you will turn it inside out, okay? And then you will stitch it in the collar band. That's how you do it in the real life, right? Now, here in 3D, uh, either you can like you can select this and you can do layer clone under okay you can produce one more pattern but we are not going to do that i'm going to show you a, simple, a, a different way right so what you can do here is that uh, you can select a pattern you can increase its thickness okay so let's just go here let's increase the thickness of this by 1.5 mm maybe so now you can see right the thickness is here right now you can uh, make the this geometry a little curved okay so you can go you can just do a uh, thickness pressure side geometry resolution can increase this okay so now you see right this has been curved and you can also turn this into double sided so now you have you are getting this double sided effect okay the next thing that you can that you have to do here is you can also add a top stitch okay so we can go to the top stitch uh, uh let's go to the top stitch free top stitch and in collar you always have a uh, like you don't break the top stitch okay you go from one side to the another side okay now you have the top stitch we also know that the top stitch goes from front and back both. So now you can see that the top stitch is not in the back, okay? Although it's not visible, not really important, but let's do it right, okay? So what you can, uh, wait, what you can do is quickly is you can go to the uh, face, you can do both, okay? So now you have in both the sides, okay? Uh, you can see you have in both the sides. This looks decent. Now you can, if you want, you can change this to, uh, like maybe one by eight or something like that looks nice you can also turn on 3d effect here uh, so that like this looks a little bit more better okay so now this collar looks finished okay this is what i mean by finishing when you say like uh, the collar is finished this is what i mean by finishing in this but look again why i said this is a visual process okay now this is visual right Th this is not technically correct because you ne also need to have one more pattern but we will remember this, okay? Like when we uh, make this pattern uh, for pr production, we know, right? We need to uh, produce one more. So we will do uh, at that time, okay? So in the same way, we want to finish all different kinds of uh, like parts uh, in, uh, in a shirt. Uh, so this is what you mean by, uh, what I mean by uh, understanding the finishing process and that makes your garment look realistic, okay? Now, the third stage is called texturing, okay? So in texturing, uh, it is important to understand like, okay, texturing is not just about uh, taking an image, putting it on Clo 3D, that is not texturing, okay? So texturing is more about understanding different kinds of fabric. How do you create those fabrics, okay? Uh, so uh, for example, let's see, uh, so how can you construct a ga like fabrics completely from scratch? So uh, suppose you are putting a screen printing fabric, okay? Uh, we know that when we put a screen printing fabric, the face of the fabric and the back of the fabric looks different because the color do not completely penetrate, okay? So we need to understand how to create these kinds of fabric. At the same time, uh, there are different kinds of weaves, right? Dobby weave, right? Jacquard weave, right? Plain, twill, satin, all these things. And they have a different uh, physical property also at the same time visual property also uh, on your fabric so how do you do that right so understanding those things becomes important understanding different maps becomes important right so how do you create those different kinds of maps so a quick example is this okay uh, that this is a simple mesh this is a design right you can convert this into a nice lace fabric okay a very quick example right so you need to understand how to create embroideries how to create lace fabric how to create different kinds of woven knitwear fabrics completely from scratch okay so that you can experiment on that side uh, so that's one 
uh, in texturing there is right now i don't think so there is any ai tools that is uh, that can do that uh, but if there will be i will i will be adding that okay now next is next stage fourth stage is called rendering okay in the rendering stage uh, is about setting up the lights setting up the camera setting up your environment okay so understanding what are hdr images how to set it up how to set up your lights how to set up your camera what kind of a camera angle works so all these understanding of doing a photo shoot in virtual world that is what rendering is okay now in rendering you can take help of ai okay uh the problem is i'll, I'll show you the problem okay so let's look into this uh, this particular image okay now uh this image you can see this is my product okay now this product goes into this model looks amazingly good by the way right and very easy also right now what i said about uh 3d and ai the difference right uh ai cannot be used for producibility side okay so a quick example is this look in this bra you don't have an underwire okay but here you can see there is an underwire which is not correct right this is a huge difference okay so that's a problem uh so when you like this is great for visual representation of your designs for presenting your design okay but uh you can't rely on this too much okay so that's first problem but again this this looks nice okay and maybe in future this problem gets solved i don't know let's see if it's solved i'll, I'll, I'll be with there with the video okay uh second is uh uh, animation okay so the last stage uh, so this is rendering the last stage goes is animation okay so animation is about two things one is giving uh, your avatar a motion based on that uh, your garment get motions and then you can also add objects like shoes football and all these things okay so for and animation is time consuming guys look for just creating this animation or football kick it has taken me three four hours okay so animation is really time consuming okay so there are two important parts uh in animation one is avatar and rigging avatar basically means like you have an avatar you uh you just add a motion to that uh avatar okay and then uh how do you animate not just the uh garment uh, also the different parts right for example shoes and other objects uh, around that okay uh so that's uh, what avatar uh, uh animation looks like okay and you can use ai into this and this is the most prominent part which i feel that everybody should start using okay now look as i said avatar is really time consuming uh, animation is really time consuming okay now in this you can see this is my rendered image from clo and i've rendered this in blender okay now you can see this is this is done in uh, runway okay and this looks amazingly good it, it it makes the garment the the design of the garment is continuous it's not changing that's great uh, like i really like this okay the second example is again this is a garment from clo rendered in blender and this is in kling ai okay which looks absolutely amazing right and uh, the garment's prints don't change that much uh, things are consistent which is great so i like this <laughs> I, I really like this okay so i think in animation ai has huge role so what you can do is you can create your designs put it on uh runway or uh, cling or some other platforms right and you can create a really nice story right create really nice uh a, a small show right two three minute a really great show of all your designs <laughs> that would be really nice uh okay so let's again quickly revise okay like what we have done till now uh, I think in 2025, 2026, 3D and AI, uh, they are just uh, moving up uh, and every designer need to include in their workflow. 3D and AI, these are two different parts in fashion. One is for inspiration and visual part, that is AI. The producibility side is 3D, okay? How uh, different brands, manufacturers, different parties communicate between them, okay? So in 3d fashion there are five stages modeling finishing texturing rendering animation okay uh and in all those parts uh you can include ai bit little bit little bit right for example in rendering and animation right now you can include ai okay in the design process also you can you know, include ai okay but 3d becomes a really important part which has a very industrial use right now okay so uh, I believe uh, that uh, if you are in the fashion industry uh, and you are starting or you have already started learning it, start uh, incorporating 3D and AI into your design processes. Uh, do check out my platform learn3dfashion.com and uh, do sign up for my newsletter. 
uh, every week I write a, a simple newsletter on how new technologies are coming and impacting uh, the fashion industry and how you can incorporate that, okay? So this is my take on 3D uh, fashion and how you should start learning cloth 3D or in general 3D fashion. Uh, do comment if you have some suggestions or some questions. I'll be happy to answer it. All right, guys. Thank you for your time and we'll see each other. I don't know if you join the course. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye-bye and enjoy life. Uh, take care.